Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Hey, over there, Mrs. Norton. You calling me, Mr. Paradiso? I am indeed. I thought you might like to see the concrete being poured. I'd love to. Lots of things going on at once, aren't there? Oh, it certainly are. Takes an awful lot of doing just to add on a new piece of barn, doesn't it? <laughs> We're coming along fine. Yep. Be through right on schedule, if not ahead of it. If we are through ahead of schedule, we'll be setting a precedent in Eastbrook, won't we? A precedent all over the United States, ma'am. <laughs> now, uh, see those fans and sweeps and pipes over there just being delivered? Mm-hmm. Now, that's the latest kind of ventilating system. David must be intending to buy a car with an awfully sensitive nose. Well, a man's jersey can be a man's best friend. Mm, I suppose a car can do a lot of things a person can't. Say, we haven't got any ventilating system in our house, have we? Well, it's not imperative, but you could have one, except uh, it's expensive. Mm -hmm. Mama said the only person I'd have to be jealous of would be David's jersey cow. Mama was right. Mama is always right. What about heat? Do we have to install heat? Not in a barn. Well, if a car has to be ventilated, doesn't she have to be heated, too? <laughs> she heats herself. Well, that's sweet of her. It's too bad, though, she can't heat herself enough so that the milk can come out all pasteurized. You think it could be arranged? Well, I'll tell your cow about it. When we get her. Say, say, you know, with you supervising this job here instead of your husband... You're going to learn an awful lot about building. You'll cut me out of business. Oh, no, thank you. When David gets out of the hospital, this job will be all yours and his. No architecting for me. No, thank you. Don't you like? Well, it's David's work. It's not mine. So even if I did like, no, thank you. Quite a tactful little wife, aren't you? I'm learning. You've learned in the last six months. I've seen you, Mrs. Norton. I've learned most in the last six days. A husband in a hospital with a concussion of the brain is a very delicate plant. So uh, you're building a hothouse for him, huh? He must only think we're building this barn. You know, Mrs. Norton, you're starting to make me think I should have married. You're missing something. I never believed it before. Of course, I don't know if any women would uh, ever consider me a delicate plant. <laughs> <laughs> you just try getting into a car accident, you'll see. <laughs> Look, Mr. Paddy's they got one whole coil of pipe laid already. Well, all the boys know that Mr. Norton is in the hospital. I told them we'd like to get the job done before he gets home. It would be wonderful. Uh, they'll do it. No decent men like to see a swell mister like David Norton cracked up in a car accident that wasn't his fault. Eastbrook's on his side. We'll have that barn ready. You know, if this has to happen to David at all... I'm certainly glad it happened in Eastbrook. In New York, an accident is such a private affair. Well, we like to pitch in. Maybe we figure it could have happened to any one of us. But uh, Mr. Norton took the rap. Well, anyway, thanks. <sighs> Isn't it a beautiful fall day? The air is so clear. Uh -huh. Your first fall up here, isn't it? And I don't want to miss one day of it. Wait, wait, you haven't seen anything yet. Wait till the end of October. In November, the turning leaves of Connecticut, it's quite a sight. You've lived here all your life, haven't you? I still get a kick out of it. Hey, hey, now watch how they pour that concrete. Easy as cream out of a pitcher. Claudia! Oh, hi, Claudia! Roger Killian, what are you doing up here in the wilds of Connecticut? I came up to see my partner and his wife. What a wonderful surprise. We can go over to the hospital together. What on earth is happening to this barn? We're building a new part. Mr. Paradiso, Mr. Killian, David's partner. Uh, pleased to meet you, sir. I've met you, young man. You did the Norton's house, too. That's right. Good job. Well, Claudia, are you supervising this piece of construction? I'm just doing the worrying. It's the same thing. <laughs> We're just pouring the concrete for the flooring. So I noticed. And uh, you're getting to be quite the expert. Oh, I wish I were. I almost wish I were the cow, too. <laughs> well, how about going down to the house, hmm? Well, just as you say. Nice to have seen you, Mr. Paradiso. Keep up the good work. Ah, uh, we'll try. Especially if it'll help Mr. Norton to his feet faster. Uh, give him my regards, yeah. will you? See you tomorrow. A check. Hey, hey, get moving with that lumber. I don't want to have to pay that truck overtime. Now, get moving. Very efficient fellow. I don't know what I'd do without him. 
Everybody's been so nice up here. It makes you want to cry. That's not the reason they're being nice. I know. Oh, the farm looks beautiful. It's just beginning to get dressed in autumn, isn't it? Yep. Mr. Paradiso and I were just talking about it. Why don't we go right over and see David? You're not tired from your trip up? Heavens, no. We'll see David now, and then we can go out to dinner. I'll take you and your mother to an excellent lobster place, I know. Roger, that's awfully sweet of you, but I... But, no, buts about it. I'm David's partner, and that goes way beyond sharing an office and a business. At least it does with me. It does with David, too. Then that settles it. David, then the lobster. Now, tell me how he is. Well, so far, so good. No complications. The main trouble now is that he's so impatient. He resents terribly that he has to be laid up and dependent on other people. He he doesn't seem to realize how serious a concussion can be. But he looks fine. Color in your cheeks. Color in your cheeks. Your eyes nice and clear, David. You really are starting to look like yourself. Well, it's about time. I wish I were out of here. I don't see why Dr. Barry's making such a fuss about a mere cracked collarbone. He knows what he's doing. And what's your dreadful hurry, David? Don't you trust me to run the business? It's not that, and you know it. No, I don't know it. And the way you act, it would seem that you'd expect our firm to founder if uh, you don't get back there first thing in the morning. Well, it just so happens, Mr. Roger Killian, that you full well know that I consider you one of the least capable architects in the business. You've often told me so, yes. Mm-hmm. An architect with absolutely no talent, no imagination, and no skill. That is the reason why I decided I'd rather work for and with you than with any other architectural firm in New York City. Well, perhaps you're just prejudiced. Perhaps I am. Say, uh, how are things out in Chicago? Excellent, excellent. Good. I was having a fine time with my boy. Uh, Jeffrey's thinking of going to the University of Chicago. Oh, really? I thought Yale or Harvard. That's right. He goes to Harvard in a week. Oh. But Chicago for medicine, after he graduates. Uh, we'd like Chicago, both of us. You'd still be there, wouldn't you? If you hadn't had to come back because of me. Yes, I probably would still be there. But Jeffrey had to come east. College opens on Monday and Chicago will still be there when I'm ready to go back. You're a... Well, I... I know it sounds stupid to say it, but... You're a swell sport about it. Swell sport, nothing. I think you're making such a fuss about me because you don't ever expect me to behave well or be capable of rising to any situation or emergency. Now, you know perfectly good... Now, don't interrupt. I'm going to have my say. Claudia, you'd better sit down. My partner is liable to carry on for quite a while. I have no place to go. David, listen to me. And don't build a barrier to prevent what I'm going to say from reaching you. Promise? I'm listening. Good. Well, when I arrived at your house a little while ago, before coming here... Claudia was up at the barn with your Mr. Paradiso. That chap, by the way, seems to know his business. Oh, he did a good job on the house. He has a soul. He's a nice fellow. At any rate, as I was saying, Claudia was up at the barn with your Mr. Paradiso. I stood in the drive to your house for a moment and watched them. They were discussing something about the building that was going on. It was the ventilating system. Sounds so wonderful, I'm half tempted to put the cow in our house and have me move into the barn. Well, it it can be arranged. (laughs) Well, I could tell without hearing a word of what they were saying. That both of them were getting a tremendous kick out of what they were doing. Really? Claudia, because watching the barn grow while you're laid up here in the hospital, gives her a feeling that you're together. That she's helping make a dream of yours come true. This barn is one more link in the chain of your lives. You're not with her, but she's doing a second best. Making it do nicely, with all her heart. Am I interpreting correctly, Claudia? I wish I could have said it that way. You don't have to, my dear. And then I watched Paradiso. No relative of yours, nobody. Nothing to you but a man who once did a job for you. Did it with pride and with respect for you. I like Paradiso. And he likes you, but that's all. At least that was all. But now he's doing something for you, supervising the building of your barn in your absence. He is making you a gift, and it's a greater pleasure than receiving Now, giving is easier. There's no obligation involved. Precisely. Tough on you that you happen to be in a spot where for a while you must be the receiver. But, David, don't take the joy out of Claudia's and Paradiso's giving by resenting it. 
You'll rob them of their only pleasure in your absence. You don't think I haven't thought of what you're saying, Roger. I know everybody's been most unselfish. No, no, I... no. Not unselfish. Selfish. Their pleasure in giving to you. They know you don't enjoy receiving, and yet they give. I want to be selfish, too. Permit it. How? Well, if you remember some months ago, I was going to close up shop. Instead, I offered you a partnership. Well, your youth and your talents have served well. So well that I was going to take a back seat, draw in my money, enjoy the dividends of the years, and put the reins in your hands. And that's exactly why I feel like such a rotter about handing the reins back to you. Temporarily. I'm a tired man, David. But it's good to know that my days of giving aren't over. So don't begrudge me these few days. And don't be impatient. You'll rob me if you are. Well, I, I feel as if I owed everybody an apology. Oh, don't be ridiculous. We're the ones doing the imposing, David, not you. Good heavens. I've been talking a long time. Claudia, we've got to pick up your mother and get going on that lobster dinner. Hey, wait a minute. Wait just a minute. Stop right there. Lobster uh, dinner, did you say? Lobster dinner, he said. That's yes, what I thought yes, he said. lobster dinner at the most wonderful little lobster place. I shouldn't dare eat it, but it's uh, so deliciously prepared. Well, I must, I, I must. Well, don't, uh, don't force yourself, my man. This, this is the end. What is the end, David? Well, I, I don't mind being dispensable. I don't mind that at all. Now, Paradiso, for an example, building my barn. He's getting along fine without me. And take Roger here. Roger's running the business single-handed. And Claudia, my own little Claudia's being as executive as a adding machine or something. But for you to go out, you two and Mama, with me here, flat on my back, jailed up, in this hospital... Sounds so pathetic. Well, I resent and I restate, I resent that deeply. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. But go on, skadoodle, and enjoy it. It's my gift to you, so we're even. When you stop for lunch downtown, you probably ought to Coke just as the men and women around you do. How about having Coca-Cola with your lunch at home? It adds a refreshing touch to the most humdrum sandwich or to icebox leftovers of the kind that so many housewives content themselves with when the other members of the family aren't home. Try Coke with your noontime meal and lunch refreshed. Oh, uh, Mr. King, may I interrupt you? You certainly may, Mr. Killian. Uh, do you think it worked with David? Uh, perhaps temporarily, but you know I can't blame him for being impatient. Of course not. Still, I suppose that for the present there's no point in telling him that he's still a very sick man. Not so sick as could be sick. No, there's no point in telling him, because if all does go well, he'll be fine and out of here. The days go slowly, but they do go. Tomorrow we'll bring David another visit to help while away the time. His brother coming up? No, his neighbor, old Jared Tucker. A very amusing gentleman who uh, don't believe in hospitals. Uh oh. <laughs> that will be a help. Well, we'll see anyway. Oh, my, can't keep that lobster waiting. So, au revoir, Mr. King. Au revoir, Mr. Killian. As I was about to say, every day, Monday through Friday... Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.